Hello and welcome to this uh, video on the titration of K-4 with ferrous ammonium sulphate. This is a simple titration between a solution whose concentration is known. We have uh, already made a K-4 solution and the concentration of K-4 solution is known. It is N by 10. And this solution is that of Mohr salt or ferrous ammonium sulphate dot 6 H2O and this solution's concentration is unknown and we are going to find out the concentration of this by doing a simple titration with K104. Now in this particular titration what we will do is we will take a measured amount of ferrous ammonium sulphate into this conical flask and to do that we are going to employ an instrument called the pipette. And if you zoom in on this, you will notice that it's written 10 ml. It's a 10 ml pipette, meaning that once I take a solution in this pipette, and I'll tell you how we're going to do that, and I transfer it into this, it will be exactly 10 ml. Now, we have taken the known solution, the KMN4 solution, whose concentration is known in an instrument called the burette. And if you focus here, just zoom in on this and you will notice there are markings on this, there are readings on this. And right now the KMN4 solution has been put such that it is touching the zero mark. The lower meniscus is touching the zero mark of this burette. And this burette has a stopcock. If I open this, the solution from this gets poured down through this tube. And I can open it and close it. And by knowing how much of KMN4 has been poured, I can measure the volume of K14 solution used. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it towards my side so that I can note the reading. And I'm going to do a simple titration between ferrous ammonium sulfate and K14. But remember, this is colorless and this is a deep purple. Now what will happen is once these two react, and in the end I'm going to show you the reaction, the product of K14 and ferrous ammonium sulfate is uh, colorless. And therefore, as these two react, as long as ferrous ammonium sulfate is in excess and the product of this is colorless and the KMN4 is getting consumed, so the solution will appear colorless to you. And once I, once the reaction between KMN4 and ferrous ammonium sulfate gets over, when the reaction is done, then when I add one extra drop of KMN4, the solution is going to turn pink. And that is when we will know that the reaction between these two is complete and we will note down the volume of K-4 that has been added. So first let me transfer this into this conical flask and I'm going to use this pipette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck this solution in this pipette and there is a very small and a slight mark here which perhaps you may not be able to see even if you zoom in on this you can try that but I doubt you'll be able to see the mark because it's a very very slight mark it's an etching on the glass and what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck the solution through my mouth and I'm going to, this is the mark, this is the place where the mark is there. I'm going to make the solution go up, up to let's say this point and then I'm going to keep my thumb. The moment I press it with my thumb, the solution will remain stationary and as I start removing my thumb, the solution will start going down and I will ensure that the lower meniscus touches this particular mark. So. Let me know where the mark is. The mark is here. And I'm going to suck the solution now. Okay. Now it's uh, above the mark. I'm going to slowly release my thumb and it's going to drop down. And it's right there now, right, the lower meniscus is right now touching the mark. It's perfectly measured now. It's 10 ml and I'm going to transfer it into this empty conical flask. As you can see, the solution is going down and this is a measured amount. 
and the solution has gone down completely now. Now generally uh, you will find a few drops of the solution still left in the pipette but one should not force these into the solution because the pipette has already been calibrated that way that the few drops will still remain and still the volume that has gone down is exactly 10 ml. So there is no need to push these drops out. So it is 10 ml now as you can see this is colorless no color there. This is deep purple and I am going to start the titration and the K-4 is going to act as a self indicator. That means the moment one drop of K-4 gets extra, I am going to get the solution as pink. So what I am going to do, I am going to hold the burette in such a way that my right hand, because this is my strong hand, I am going to hold the conical flask because I have to continuously shake it. So I am going to keep the conical flask with my, hold my, the conical flask with my right hand and with my left hand I am going to cover the burette and I should ensure that this knob is on the right side so that I can hold the burette with my left hand and open the stopcock and close the stopcock when is it is required. So I am going to open the stopcock now and if you zoom in on this you will notice that K-4 started getting added. I am adding it drop wise. You should do it drop wise and swirl the solution with your strong hand. And there is no need to check the burette level, just keep looking at the flask and please ensure that there is a white paper beneath this so that you will be able to see the color properly. So I am adding the Cayman 4 solution drop by drop. The titration is getting done and as you can notice, the moment the Cayman 4 gets, if you can just zoom in on this, this particular solution, you will notice that just as the Cayman 4 drops, the solution is pink at that particular uh, point. And as I am shaking it, as the swelling is taking place, you will notice it again becomes colorless because the product of ferrous sulfate and KMnO4 is colorless. And I keep adding this and one has to add it very carefully but I am adding it a little fast for the sake of the video. So I am um, swelling this, so far I have added about 4 ml and um, so let us see. I have to add it till I get a pink color and uh, right now it is colorless and so far I have added around 6 ml and now the pink color is staying more um, for a longer time that is because it is finding it hard to find the ferrous sulfate because it is getting reacted. So there is uh, very good chance that I am going to reach the end point now because the k 4 finds it hard to find the ferrous sulfate. A lot of ferrous sulfate has already reacted and but of course we are going to wait for the pink to appear. I have done, I've put around 8 ml and uh, let me see. Yes, it is still colorless. I will keep noticing that it is finding it hard now. The pink is staying for a longer time. I need to really shake it well and uh, no, it is still colorless. Now let me put it drop wise. I do not want to put anything extra. Uh, just one drop extra would do so that we can get more accurate reading. And uh, and no, it is still colorless and perhaps now it is turned pink, yes it is turned pink now. Just look at the solution, it is very slightly pink. So that means I have just added one or perhaps maybe two drops of k 4 in excess and that two drops is not going to matter much as far as the reading is concerned. So this is the end point. And remember, I know the volume of ferrous ammonium sulfate, that is 10 ml. I know the concentration and volume of k 4 And the volume of k 4 that I have measured, let me, um, okay. So according to me, the volume is around 9.2, 9.2 ml. I am going to turn it towards the camera. Let the camera zoom in and you will note it is 9.2 ml. So that is the volume of k for use 9.2 ml and 10 ml of ferrous ammonium sulphate was used. The concentration of k 4 is n by 10 
and I show you the calculations that will help you determine the normality or the concentration of the ferrous ammonium sulfate that was used. Now again uh, a word of uh, uh, caution, one must ensure that when you are swelling the solution, the k does not drop out because there is a possibility that as you are swelling it, you know the conical flask may go right or left to the burette, you have to ensure it does not do that. At the same time, the reason we take a conical flask and not a normal beaker is because the beaker has a wide mouth. A conical flask by its very nature has a very narrow mouth and as you are swelling it, you do not want anything to splash out. So that is the reason that we take a conical flask of a narrow mouth. So I am going to show you now the reactions involved and I am going to show you the calculations involved and using this, we will be able to find out the concentration of ferrous ammonium sulphate. We have done a simple titration with KMNO4 and I hope this helps you in understanding how the titration gets done. Thanks for watching. So here is the reaction of the titration between KMNO4 and Moosol solution. The complete balance reaction goes like this. It is 2 KMNO4 reacting with 10 FeSO4 and H4 twice SO4 dot 6 H2O that is the Mohs salt with sulfuric acid giving manganese sulphate 2 MnSO4, 5 Fe2SO4 thrice, K2SO4, 10 NH4 twice SO4 and 48 H2O. So this is the balanced reaction and as you can notice the ferrous is becoming ferric. So this is the oxidation of ferrous happening and the manganese is going from plus 7 to plus 2 oxidation state and that is reduction in the presence of sulfuric acid. So the oxidation and reduction are happening for iron, iron getting oxidized, manganese getting reduced. So now let us look at the calculation part of it. As you know the law of equivalence, the law of equivalence state that the equivalence of two substances one getting reduced, other getting oxidized have to be equal and number of equivalents is the normality multiplied by volume. So N1V1 for sulfuric acid would be equal to N2V2 for ferrous ammonium sulphate. N1 represents the normality of KMnO4, V1 represents the volume of KMnO4 that we saw dropping down through the burette. N2 is the concentration of ferrous ammonium sulphate in the conical flask and volume V2 of FeSO4 NH4 twice SO4 dot 6H2O was the volume that we had taken through the pipette. So if you substitute the value N1 was 1 by 10 and the volume of KMnO4 that we got from the bureau was 9.2 .9 and V2 is the volume of uh, the ferrous, ferrous ammonium sulphate that we took in the conical flask that is 10 and N2 is the concentration of ferrous ammonium sulphate which was unknown and we can calculate this by this particular value and that is N2 is 0 0.092. Thanks for watching.